My granddad trained me, to be honest, um, especially up until I was about 14. Trained in the barn boxing gym, Cold Bridge, alongside guys like Ricky Burns and Martin Watson, was a good boxer back then as well. He was running the British level. Yeah, I got a silver medal in the Tampier tournament in um, Birdland, and I got a gold in Poland, so I represented Scotland. I ended up going to like America, training in gyms like Freddie Roach's gym and stuff, gaining some experience first, and um, sparring the guys from Kid Chocolate and some other like, world level fighters, yeah. just to see if I was good enough, to see if I was going to make it or not. Well, I'm hoping, hoping all goes well, God willing, I win this fight tomorrow night, and then I'm looking at WBO international titles. I'm looking to get back in the top 10 in the world, I know that. Hi guys and welcome back to KRN TV. We'll bring you the most exciting interviews from around the world. Today delighted to be at the Camby Boxing Club with boxing star John McKellen. John, how are we doing pal? Yeah, good mate. Good thanks. How are you? Very well, thank you. So uh, thank you very much for giving me the time of day and let me ask you a few questions today. No, that's no worries. So um, people who don't know, you've uh, had a very long line of boxing. You're an amateur star, had nearly 150 amateur fights, yeah. seven times national junior champion. Yep. up in Scotland. So um, let's talk to me a little bit about how you got into the boxing and when you started it, what sort of age, I guess you started at a real young age, did you? Yeah, pretty much started but four or five years old from when I can remember really. Granddad always had me and my cousins into boxing, so we were always training in the gym pretty much every other night. And so, you know as a child, was that all you wanted to be when you were older? Was that your main focus, your dreams to be yeah. a fighter? Yeah, it was all, always, always boxing. We trained every day, every day was boxing. That was, that was the main dream. I always wanted to be a professional boxer. So, like I said, you had unbelievable amateur records, achieved lots and lots of stuff. So, talk to me about what led you to where well, you got the determination, how hard you had to work in order to do that, the dedication, and who you trained with as an amateur during that time. My granddad trained me, to be honest, um, especially up until I was about 14. I trained in the, the barn boxing gym, Coke Bridge, alongside guys like Ricky Burns. And, Martin Watson was a good boxer back then as well. He was running the British level. Um, there was loads of guys in that gym. I ended up boxing quite a few guys from that gym in the championships as well. There was that many of us who went through the gym. Um, we ran into each other at the same weight as well. Um, but I trained in many gyms. I trained in the barn. Trained there. Um, there was the old Gilmerton gym back in the day. Uh, Sandy's club, Middle Bank. Just went around all the gyms and sparred with everyone. Mm. So were you boxing internationally as yeah. an amateur junior and stuff like this as yeah. well? Yeah, I got a silver medal in the Tampier tournament, um, tournament and I got a gold in Poland, so I represented Scotland internationally as well. Yes, that must have been a great experience and obviously it's did you a good stead when you see your pro career, which obviously you know, yeah. Up yeah, and I raked up a lot of wins, um, especially as a junior. Um, I wanted to turn professional when I got to like 16, 17, um, so I always sort of sparred with pros yep. from quite a young age, from that age. Um, but as a junior, I box pretty much every week, so I've got good experience. Yeah, indeed. And so what made you want to turn uh, professional so early? We didn't have uh, any dreams going to the Olympics or trying to do anything like that? Yeah, no. I would have loved to have went to the, the Olympics, but in the amateur game, it's quite political. And to get in the GB sort of set up, like we're limited from guys from Scotland getting in that sort of set up. Mm. It's quite hard to crack, so it was probably an easier route to go professional and trying to, trying to secure a belt that way. Indeed. So what age did you turn professional? Was it at 16, 17 years old? No, I was at 19. 19. 19, 19 I ended up turning professional. I ended up going to like America, and training in gyms like Freddie Roach's gym and stuff, gaining some experience first, um, sparring with guys like Kid Chocolate and some other like world level fighters. Yeah. Just to see if I was good enough, to see if I was going to make it or not. And so how did you find that then? You threw yourself in the deep end? Did yeah. You play back? Yeah, jumped on a flight, booked a hotel, jumped in, jumped in these gyms. Sparred with the best, just yeah. test myself, see how good I was. Nice. 
Um, so talk to me about then your how you got on in the pros. Then your record at home is it 15, 14, and one at the moment? Yeah, I, I lost my last fight. Um, I boxed for the WBO European title over in Russia, so um, I lost that fight. Um, I was up against it, but I mean, I gave a good go and I took it, and it was a good experience. So I'm looking to get back up there. Mm. And so I know you took the fight on short notice. Um, yeah. Again, such a going out into obviously the other people's backyard. Yeah. You really threw yourself in the deep end. Why was that the case of during the COVID times, you struggled to get a fight and you just... Yeah, I'd been at the ring two and a half years and I always kept banging on at Charlie to get me a fight. I said, get me whatever fight. And he came and said, I've got you the hardest fight I could possibly get you. A six foot eight Russian Southpaw, Olympic gold medalist. And I said, mm. right, cool, let's go. So I mean, I always fancied going to Russia as well. I'd never been to Russia. So it was, it was a good experience. Indeed. And so, um, Obviously, that one didn't go your way, no. but you're straight back on the thing, and you've actually got a fight tomorrow night at your call. Yeah, that's right. And so, talk to me about your opponent, who your opponent is. It's going to be a tough fight for you, or is it just um, to get back in there? It should, it should be a routine win, but I'm taking nothing for granted. I mean, I was meant to fight a better opponent, but he failed the COVID test, so now I'm fighting a, a tough journeyman um, fighter. But, like I say, like respect to all these guys who take fights, especially ones at short notice. Without these guys, shows would fall apart so mm -hmm. um, I've got full respect for my opponent tomorrow night um, but I know that I need to go in there and do a job. Indeed and um, so you, you mentioned your granddad was your trainer early on is he still yeah. training you? Yeah. No my granddad um, passed away yeah, rest in peace good, your granddad. Few, good few years ago and um, he trained me up till I was like 14 he sort of directed me in boxing and um, before, before he took out um, so then I sort of left him on devices 14 15 yep. um, but yeah, my, no, my granddad guided me. And so, who are you training so. with now then? I'm training with Charlie here in Camberley. Oh, so you're, based, you're actually yeah, based in Camberley? I'm based in Camberley. Uh, How you found it then in Camberley? You enjoying it around these ways? And yeah, it's nice. It's a nice place. So training nice place. going well with Charlie? Yeah, training's gone great. And so, you're in good shape, ready for tomorrow night? Yeah, I'm in good shape. I'm in the best shape I can be, so I made weight right, comfortably. Yes, you've got to win yes, you years. Lovely, so in the background there you can hear the rhino, Tony Giles, oh, one of uh, John's yeah, good pals. Yeah, the rhino, one So yeah, you've been having some good sparring, have you? And, yeah. Yeah, now yeah, I've been having good sparring, and yeah, there's good lads here in the gym to spar with. And that is just with the guys in the gym, or you've been travelling around locally and that? No, just the guys in the gym, just in the guys in the gym, we all help each other, so. Alright, and so you obviously you're still at a young age, 32 years old, so talk yeah. to me about your dreams and aspirations, what you're hoping to achieve in the boxing game then over the next few years. Well, I'm hoping all goes well, God willing, I win this fight tomorrow night, and then I'm looking at WBO international title, so I'm looking to get back in the top 10 in the world, I know that I boxed um, a very highly skilled boxer in my last fight, um, but that's where I want to be, I felt like I belonged at that level, I never felt in my depth, I felt I handled myself well in that fight, and I felt like I could have possibly won that fight with a bit of notice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I want to try and achieve. I want to stay in shape and wait for the phone to ring again. Mm -hmm. And so how... So I was dreams into a nightmare for a UK fight. I didn't want it. Let's have it. McCullough! No. Sorry. That's I want to have a word. So, so how far can you go then in boxing game? Can you be a world champion or is it... 100%. Yeah? 100%. Well, perfect. So, um... Guys, start following John and talk to me about your social media and stuff like this. You want to keep up with all the social media stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got Instagram. You can find me. It's uh, at John McCallum Jr. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter as well. Same same address and Facebook. Um, but mainly I just use Instagram. All right. And so is, uh, what about managers? Charlie managing you as well? Is he I'm them? managed by, by Mo Pryor. Okay, nice. Pryor. So, yeah. Good manager in the game then. So, uh, yeah, Mo's a nice guy. And so, um, talk to me about any sort of shout outs you want to give to your sort of friends and families. I do, I do want to give a, a big shout out to my sponsor. Um, it's A, A dot C Roads and Driveways. It's my cousin Alex Cunningham um, up in Gala Shields in the Scottish Borders. He's always been a big help for all my fights. Um, he stayed loyal with me through thick and thin. Even when I lost the fight in Russia, he's backing me and he'll be, he'll be at the Yacht Club tomorrow night. So, big shout out to him. We're wishing you best of luck sort of tomorrow night then. And uh, one thing we haven't touched on, so you're from the travelling community as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm from the travelling community. That's and, my heritage. Yeah, so it's even sort of more so important than the travelling community than the boxing and the fighting, isn't it? It's, um, 
yeah, and so I'm guessing your family are real proud of you for obviously going down this. Yeah, yeah, no, boxing was in my family, and it all started to think my granddad was into boxing, but my uncle Thomas, my uncle Tommy, he was a two time Scottish champion in the pros, um, he was a really good amateur as well. He boxed guys like Terry Marsh and Lloyd Hunnigan. I think he knocked out an English ABA champion, George Gilbody, as well, um, back in the day, so it was always boxing in the family. Um, all my uncles boxed, my dad boxed, so. And it's all ever going to be one sport for me, to be honest. Well, I'm wishing you the best of luck going forward your career, and obviously the best of luck tomorrow night, and then hopefully maybe a few months down the line we can sit down and do something again and do a bit more of an in-depth one, talk a little bit more about yeah. charging and stuff like this. Yeah, not bad, but I appreciate but, um, it. Yeah, just like I say again, thank you for your time, John. Much appreciated. Go and refuel ready for tomorrow night, get loads of cards in the oven. Ready. And best of luck. Thanks so much. Cheers.